bushfires at the other, and they've, they've, you know, they've had an earth effect of, for today too. Yeah, yeah, massive bushfires in Western Australia at the moment, actually. So it's a bit of crazy. And then over on the other side, we've got those big storms. So nah, it's been a crazy time. Uh, cheers for making it fine to have a chat with me, eh, Thomas? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and crazy. Like, we also had a little bit confusion with time zones and all. But, yep. you know, I have, I, I have a good 20 minutes here, so we can just okay, cool. roll. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm good at that. I like rolling with it anyway, Thomas. So I'll just do an intro and we'll go from there, mate. Yeah. G'day, how you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with Crank and with that metal station. And tonight I'm having a chat to Tuomas. Um, Runakari, sorry, man, if I ruined it with my Aussie accent. I, no, I have that uh, problem. Acclaimed violinist, composer, ethnomusicologist, and you also rock the world with Finnish folk metal, metal legends Corpa Klani, who are due to release their 11th studio album, Gilla, 5th of February through Nuclear Blast Records. And I did want to add in Educator as well. I forgot to put that bit in there. Cheers to making some time to have a chat with me, mate. Thank you. Thank you. I, I should have you as a speaker wherever I go. That was so, so uh, effective introduction. <laughs> no, absolute pleasure, man. I, I, I know Corp Kleine's work for, you know, who, who doesn't? You're, you know, Finnish folk metal legends and you're just absolutely um, blowing the world apart. You're well apart with this 11th studio album, mixing in the, um, the, the folk the Finnish folk stories, which I absolutely love. I had in Slave last year, and we were talking about Norwegian um, tales as well. So I love um, experiencing different cultures through music, which is something you, you're quite um, accustomed to, I suppose, you, you, the degrees and all that sort of stuff as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's the, that's the real juice of my life, you know, uh, um, different cultures and different perspectives through the world and, um, how we perceive the cosmo cosmo uh, cosmos, you know, and yeah. you know all of these big questions. They are kind of uh, the real reason of being alive. Yep. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And music is um, you get so much power from music. It does have a, a real deep healing effect, and we'll get lost into that. But first off, let's start get into this album. Can I ask first? Uh, um, about the songwriting and themes that have helped influence you all with the, the making of this album. Uh, I didn't quite hear you. Uh, like yep. what... Can you tell me a little bit about the songwriting process for this album? Yeah. Well, um, uh, there, there's uh, there's always songwriting going on in Korpiklani. Like, uh, Jon writes most of the songs, but also other band members. And even Juho, our former accordion player, has, has written songs to every Korpiklani album. So there's always some songs around and demos around. But this time, sometime around February, we started mapping time for, for actually, you know, we pinned down that we'll be in the studio on May. And uh, yep. and then the COVID hit us. We were playing uh, playing our last show in, in Japan, in Tokyo, uh, on the same day when when Tokyo, when Japan announced that that uh, all all public events will be cancelled. And subsequently, all of our shows were cancelled. So so, you know, this time we we had more time to to just dig into the composition and, and arranging. Um, Sami Pertula on the accordion is is very influential on the on the uh, folk arrangements and and also writes some of the melodies for violin as well. And um, if you think of it, the guitars are mainly playing fifths, so it's the accordion that actually decides if it's a major or minor chord. So, uh, so Sami has a big influence on, on the overall harmony and sound of the songs. So me and Sami were thinking of the folk arrangements together and then traveling over to Jonas' place and looking at the whole songs together. And our new, new drummer Samoli was also very 
influential on on the overall structures of the songs. So, so he's been working a lot with Yonne, and uh, they they've kind of become a power duo that that they work a lot together. That that um, in this album shows in the overall structures that the songs are maybe better organized than than ever before. Yeah, and Samuel is gone on the drums, not taking anything away from Matson and that, but it, it must be good to have uh, also a, a a new kind of like back, backbone with that that drum as well, and a little bit of um, you know, kind of new energy as well in the band. Well, that's true, and uh, the thing with with Matson is that he he was never a studio drummer. He didn't like being in a studio, and. Uh, yeah. You know, already Ukon Vakka album was was uh, done with another drummer. The Axo Hantu, who was the producer, did those drums. So, so uh, Jonne felt that now is the time to have the same man on the live set and on the albums, and 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 that it's the only way forward from now on. And and I I think he was right at the end. And yeah, yeah, and Samuel is a great drummer too. It's uh, it's Absolutely. good watching him get up Absolutely. there in those film clips yeah. as well. Yeah, a remarkable musician. So that's true. Yeah. So 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 what? How long did the recording and production process take? And it, did the COVID kind of knock that around at all, or were you able to 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 get over there in Finland and record that all right? Or yeah, well, actually, there wasn't much difference on the actual recording. So yeah. So the demo phase was maybe deeper than than uh, before. You know, like w- once you've spent a month with these guys in a tour bus and you come home, you really don't want to see them for a while. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> so, it's like a family. <laughs> yeah. So so now that now that uh, we weren't touring, there was some more relaxed energy also among us to work on 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 the album and the new songs and that had an effect but then actually in the studio on may things went pretty much as they always do on a studio um we had the same producer janne saksa who did the kulkia album and uh, and i think we are probably going to continue with him for some time i mean it's yep. just so effortless to work with him and we are so pleased with the results so so um it feels like like janne is our guy and um you know after that it's bizarre that that we haven't been playing these for songs for an audience like yeah with the with the cool we were playing you know, way before the album was released, we were playing these songs live, and now you know we've been playing these songs over a year, with with not really sharing them physically with our yeah. audience. You know, playing it to people. So, yeah, it it feels awkward. Yeah, it would because he's had that Powerwolf single. I think that was back in September. Then he's kind of had the first single, which is um back in October as well, which was a, a a really nice couple of months there, considering how 2020 was going. And then we had some new music from Corpaclani and some announcement yeah. that this album was coming. Um, what can you tell me a little bit about that first single and why you kind of went with that one first off the album? Oh well. Well, uh, that's um, Levaluhta. There's an interesting story to it because uh, Levaluhta is an actual place here in Finland, a swamp where where hundreds of bodies were found. So um, uh, those bodies have been there in the swamp for for decades, for 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 hundreds of years. So uh, nobody really knows what happened there what you know was it a collective suicide or was it was it some kind of an attack uh or 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 what happened you know was there a hunger that just killed a lot of people and and or some kind of a plague so we don't know but but archaeology has shown that that this is what there is and uh, that is also a little bit of a theme in this album that we 
this time we chose stories from the folk tales that are kind of on the edge of reality that that you can't be really sure if they are myths or if they are actual history writing you know or oral history and uh, and like the also there's a song about uh, about the lake budum murders niemi yeah. and you know that's also a kind of a that's an unsolved murder mystery of our own time and something that that the folk is is creating stories of and you know we know that the murders happened we know that it's a real thing but there's also a lot of stories around it that we don't know if they are true so you could imagine that several hundred hundreds of years from now the context is missing it's you know it's been forgotten but the stories keep on going so who's to tell what's real and what's not at that point so this this is a one of an, one of the big aspects in the songs that that you can find in in many of these stories Mülle, for example that it's is a story about a guy who who is supposed to go to the windmill but doesn't dare to go because people have gone missing near near the windmill and you don't know why you don't know if if there's a crazy person you don't know if there's just you know some spirits that that uh, you know evil spirits or if people just go crazy and 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 leave you know yeah. so these kind of things that do happen in in our lives these tragedies that that happen in our time and have happened all in all times is some kind of a glue in in this album yeah, I I, yeah, I the, love that too because I, I dive into all these as well as your I was hoping you'd talk about them because I did have that in there and I was diving into not only the folk stories behind some of these songs and getting out the rough translations and going through it the last couple of days but looking into some of these stories and I love doing that with music and especially albums like yours as I was saying and with Enslaved and bands like that really I'd get right into not only the, the folklore and the music behind it but the the lyrics and everything as well and the stories that they come from yeah yeah i mean we we have the biggest collection of folk poems in the whole world here in finland and all these poems are are lyrics to a song so uh uh we are not going to run out of material I love that too because it's like your 11th studio album and you're already going oh we're definitely not going to run out so it's obviously you know that there's no slowing down for you guys that's for sure I hope not I mean I think I think we've actually come to a point that that we've become a really good band in all levels like Corpicone yeah. has always been a terrific live band uh, but I think you know in these past years the the eight years that i've been in you know we've become a better and better band you know better and better musicians and and we play together better and better and now we've come to a point that we are actually a really good band in you know just in 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 every level so you know i i really hope that this could be the kind of a beginning to it you know like yeah, well, is there a legendary band? Is a made an impact beyond anything yeah. is, that just can be very proud of, and you know, with your work with um, Corpaclani, but also the other work you do as well is pretty unreal. Some of the other work, can you quickly just briefly tell us a well a little bit about the other work you do as well? Oh gosh, um, briefly is, is is the difficult. I know, I know. <laughs> it was, but, yeah, but I got lost one today. One of, um, well, maybe I, I often say to people that I have five lives, but at, as a one go, I can only remember three or four of them. So, <laughs> so, so, Corpiclani life, we've, we've discussed uh, uh, another very big aspect of my life is laments. Yeah. And laments are the are the crying songs, the ritualistic songs that that all over the globe we we used to have a tradition of funeral songs that women were 
wailing women were singing. So here in Finland, um, we have one of the richest um, cultures of, of, of lament. And the poetry in the laments is simply amazing. It, it's it's really like the highest level of poetry that I have come across in a in the whole world. It is just um, incredible poetry. Like one of the elements of that poetry is alliteration, where every word every word uh, begins with the same syllable. So you can have poetic phrases that have 29 words beginning with the same syllable. So, so you know, and it's incredible language, like very des descriptive, beautiful language. So it's hard to come across of poetry in that level in the first place. And laments were, were practically extinct in after the second world war and uh, i've been working in order to revitalize the genre of lament and bring it back to life and and uh, and i think it's maybe the biggest achievements of my life that that together with birko Fielman, who is a 40 year old older 40 years older than i am uh, together with her, we developed a method how to teach laments to to people who don't have any experience of them. And and in course of twenty years, over thousand thousand people in Finland have have learned laments through our method, and uh, and the whole genre of lament has become revitalized. Yeah. And uh, today, there's movement in Ireland about the Irish keening tradition that, that went underground in 1950s and, and has almost died out. So now in I Ireland there is a movement of, of re-imaging keening traditions and, uh, and bringing that back to life. And I've been honored to, to give some consultation to those people in, in that movement. Yes, and then there's there's the shaman violin, my solo that originally led my my path to Korpiklaani. You know, yeah. um, Jonne was a fan of shaman violin, my solo before I even knew about Korpiklaani myself. So uh, so it kind of went uh, in a funny way that that Jon, you know Jonne called me and asked me to join, and. Uh, the shaman violin is is based on on uh, the shamanic songs of the Arctic people all over the Siberia and and Finland and and uh, and maybe maybe later also from Greenland or, or who knows where where I'll end up and who I end up working with. But this working together with indigenous cultures is also a big part of my life. I, I'm a founding member of a theater ensemble here in Finland that works, collaborates with indigenous artists and indigenous theater theaters uh, across the the northern hemisphere. So, um, so that that's also relates to everything that I do, this, this search of a different perception on, on cosmos. And, uh, and I genuinely believe that we could solve so many of the problems of today by learning from the indigenous people. Yep. Just the fact that, you know, the indigenous people, um, they host less than 20% of the landmass in this globe, in globally, but eighty percent of the biodiversity is found on the areas that are managed by indigenous people. So you know, here we are with the climate change, and 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 on the in the middle of a sixth mass extinction. So you know, I think those people, they you know, they they have know how how to. Yeah to bring balance and harmony in into where you live and 
and they they have know-how about self-sufficiency stemming from nature that that we've so eagerly destroyed in 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 large areas in in a world so those those are briefly <laughs> uh, i had to ask because i absolutely love your work thomas it's a, you know i'd be remiss of me to ask about your other work you do as well because besides your work with corporal carney this album is absolutely an amazing album i did have to mention that the album um comes out Sheila comes out 11th um is the 11th studio album from corporal carney it comes out 5th of february for nuclear blast records everyone grab it re- grab it put it in your stereo turn it up really loud for your neighbors because they're going to want to rock out to this amazing album as well thomas did you have any quick last words or shout outs before we sign out my friend well i'd say that you know we've been all through in some hard times so we could all use some music that uplifts you and you know that's that's what we are basically fundamentally why we are playing in Korpiklan is that we like to uplift you. So you know, take your chance, hop on board, and 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 fly, fly with that. I do it. absolutely, pre- absolute pleasure, mate. You have a lovely night, and thank you very much for joining me for a chat. Thank you, thank you.